Hello my friends, today I have for you the Affinity Designer Workbook. I will show you every chapter, every project in this book. So this is a review of the book. I like it a lot to make this short. And um, this could be seen as an advertisement because I am showing you the product, but it's not paid. I'm not getting money from them. I'm telling you my honest opinion about the book. And uh, well, yeah, let's get started. One of my viewers, by the way, suggested I show you this on a book stand so you see better what I'm doing. So let's go over to my kitchen table and have a look into this great book. See you in a second. So as you can see here, uh, similar to the Affinity Photo Book, this is uh, built up in chapters where first you get an interface tour. So it shows you the interface explains the, the personas and tools, the studio panels, customizing your workspace, keyboard shortcuts and resetting your workspace. So this explains the very basics on how to understand the interface and after that comes uh, basic skills and then you have artistic projects and after that you have um, commercial designer projects, a logo app, stuff like that. So let's have a look in here. You can see there is every tool explained uh, that you see on the surface and the explanations again are very to the point and very nicely done. For example here it says transparency tool. The transparency tool allows you to apply and edit transparency gradients to vector and text objects. Keyboard shortcut epsilon. So really to the point and very clear in the description. Okay, let's go on to the next part here. You can see also the panels are very nicely explained in what they do every step with a blue line so you can exactly see where this did, uh, or to which part of the picture of this kind of area um, that the, the explanation belongs to. So again, very short and uh, precise description, hide and show. Uncheck to hide the item, check to make it visible again. Super precise, super nice explanation. Let's go on in the book and here we already have chapter two. So I'm just showing you samples of the chapters, not the whole book, of course. In this part, you can see you're going to learn the core skills, which is really important. So you should do this chapter first um, before you start with the art projects. Um, again, they, they, they explain how to work with the artboards, what objects are and how to work with them, what layers are, geometry, uh, geometry tools, pen tools, curves and shapes. So this is what you use mainly for vector graphics because they are mathematical lines. Uh, so curves and shapes are um, the basic core element they are made of. Then you have colors and gradients. Gradients are extremely uh, important in designing with vectors. So you need to understand them very well and how to use them and how to, for example, create a 3D look uh, with the right appliance of um, or usage of gradients. Then you have effects and adjustments, design aids and symbols. Let's go to the next part and you can see here again, for example, here it explains what artboards are, how to work with them, business card. Interestingly, it's the same example that I'm giving in my video uh, that I created and in the comparison between what is Affinity Photo, what is Affinity Designer. So really nice and short explanations that tell you how to use what. Here, for example, it shows what clipping is. So you have vector clipping, you have raster clipping. It, is, it explains the difference between the two and how to apply that in a very basic way because this is just explaining the core skill of using clippings. Okay, let's go on. Um, here you have the pen tools. Like I said, this is super important and it shows you here um, how to create a curve uh, with these little handles here that will um, how can I say, influence the bend of the curve. It's like a rubber band and you can bend it with these little anchors here, stuff like that, how to use a line, how to create a shape. And the shape is different, of course, from a line because it's a line that's closed. And when it's closed, it's creating a shape that you can fill with a gradient, for example. Okay, 
Now let's go on. What else do we have here? For example, here it explains effects and adjustments. You can see here uh, what I said before that you use gradients uh, to create a 3D look. In this case, we have the shiny reflection or highlight on um, a billiard ball and then also the shadow on the lower part. And these are created purely with gradients, 2D gradients uh, to create this kind of 3D look. Very nice. A very good example. Okay, chapter three is, as I said, illustration projects. These are uh, projects. These are done by really good designers. Every project in this book is really good, well designed, looks great. Um, so yeah, it's it's a good example to get started, and also gives you some kind of artistic guidance what to look for, which is really important because. You don't only want to have the skills, you only you also want to know how to make it look good and how to be a good artist. So here we have five different projects. You're gonna create a painter, reflected skyline, the whittler, wine cellar, and the fisherman. And when you go to the first project, you can see here a very nice painter created from vector art. And this is explaining how to do that from the very first steps of creating a sketch on paper and then taking a photo, scanning it into, so bring it into the program. And in the next step, of course, you want to sketch out these lines um, with your curves in Affinity Designer. And afterwards comes the step where you use gradients to fill them. So step by step, you can see this is explained uh, very well. Let's go on here to the next part. You can see here are the gradients applied to the design. So you have this kind of look where it gets a little bit of a, a 3D look, not too much because we want to have this kind of uh, graphic print look. So really nicely done. Whoop, my cat is coming on the table, sorry. There we go. Uh, okay, so the next project is Reflected Skyline. I really like this because it's kind of sci-fi. I think it's kind of simple to do because mostly, as you can see, it's straight lines and gradients. So this is a nice project to get started and also it makes use um, of the pixel persona, I think, because down here uh, you can see in the reflection that we have uh, some blurring of the design that was created up here to have a nice water reflection of the skyline. Um, again, of course, everything in here is very well explained from the first step for every building through to the last part of putting in the gradients and the lines and creating the reflection in the picture. You can see here, this is just, um, uh, how do you say, well, reflected down, uh, flipped vertically down um, and then blurred so you have the reflection in the water. Very nice project to get started. The next one here is a lot more artistic. You can see this kind of robot sitting in the forest. Um, chipping on some wood and um, you can see that this is using a style and this might surprise you that you could use vectors in a way that actually look like it's painted and you can do that. You can also create your own brushes and surprise, surprise, I find this really cool. They are showing you how to create your own texture brushes in a vector program so you can use them and make these great looking pictures with them that actually look like paint. You can see here really nice stuff um, that is explained how to do that. Also how to apply textures. As you can see you just use your smartphone, take a picture and then you have a canvas that you can use um, as a texture for your brush so it looks like you're actually painting on a canvas. So this, these are really nice basic tricks by the way. I'm also doing a tutorial on that if you want to have it in a film form. Uh, I want to do a master brush course on Skillshare, uh, which will go through all the details. I will do it uh, for Affinity Photo, uh, but I might also do one for Affinity Designer. If you like that, write it in the comments. And as you can see here, again, it explains step by step the whole project, how to draw all the curves, how to blend all these things together so you have a really nice end result. Next project, the wine cellar, as you can see here, very nice. And it's a little, um, oh God, I forgot the name of the artist, uh, Escher. 
It's a little Escher kind of style because you can see here's a door, but it's sideways and stuff like that. Um, so you don't know what's up, what's down. And uh, here we have a room, but the room is in a different perspective. So you can play um, with the mind of the viewer. So really nice project tells you how to work with perspective. That is very cool. And of course, it is explained step by step. You can see here applying gradient to making um, the uh, barrel look round. So that's very, very nice. And um, well, I selected only one page here. So uh, the next one is the Fisherman. This is a little bit more uh, comic style. So you can see with vectors, you can do a lot of different styles. They can look in this case, I think it looks a little bit, a little bit like a graffiti art, uh, like spray paint. Uh, so you're really free with your style. Vector has a lot of um, different abilities. And the cool thing about Vector, I don't know if you know that, is um, that you can scale this indefinitely because um, it's not based on pixels, it's based on mathematical curves. So you can uh, size this up to the house uh, size of a, of a house wall. And this is still all sharp, no pixelation, looks completely pristine. So if you want to do, uh, want to do designs like these and have them on different sizes, uh, from very small to very big, Vector is a really good way to go through that. Um, okay. As you can see here, this shows step by step how to create every part, every effect. And this is really nice because you can look in the, how can I say, behind the scenes of what an artist is doing, how they're preparing a scene and really splitting it up into their vector art, which is really, really important to work with vectors because this is a different art and you really need to understand uh, how to build up an element from these different parts uh, so it looks good, otherwise you're really lost and, and it's really hard to work with vector graphics. Uh, so yeah, this is why I would suggest getting a book like this or this book in this case, because the projects are so nice. Okay, next part, design projects. And these are commercial design projects. So um, you can see it says Lace Frame Gallery 1, Lace Frame Gallery 2, Tix App 1, Tix App 2. Um, yeah, so uh, the names are not telling you very much at this moment, but when you um, turn the page over, you can see that Lace Frame Galleries 1 actually is telling you how to make a branding and a logo for this gallery. Very nice project. And again, what uh, they are doing is they are going from the very first steps of coming up with the idea. Um, is there a sketch? You can see here you have different sketches of the idea, how to work that out and how to get to the final idea. So you, they tell you a little bit about that. So that's very cool to know uh, these steps. And then of course they go through all these kind of things, creating the logo, using the right um, text for that. And also here you can see um, working with the text. Uh, so this is called kerning, where you move the individual uh, letters around. So um, the, the space between them is equal. You can see here the C is way too far away from the A, while the L is too close to the A. This is really important to know how to fix these things to make the logo look professional. As you can see here, it is fixed. Here you see spaces are the same. Learning this makes you a lot uh, better as an artist, as a designer. Okay, so let's go to the next project already. And that is Lace Frame Gallery 2. And in this case, you can see this tells you how to apply the design to different kind of products. In this case, I think this is a bag of coffee beans and we have a coffee cup and a brochure. And um, we have some kind of I don't know, is this a sticker maybe or something where you put the cup on so the dripping doesn't go on the table? Something like that. And it explains you how you can apply this and even how you design this cup in vector because this is just used as a picture um, on the brochure. So this is also very important, it's very nice. Um, when you would do something for the customer or even for yourself, for example, let's say you make a design for a birthday or for a marriage, um, and you want to design the different things like the invite cards and also this, uh, the presents uh, that you give the people and stuff like that. You want to know how to apply this to the different products and still have it look nice. So this is really, really useful. Already we are in the next part. This is how to design an app. And I think uh, this is 
a really big topic today because everybody is doing apps. Not everybody is doing apps, but there's a lot of people who want to do apps. And even if you don't, uh, you maybe want to design your website, uh, which is also on a screen. So this is basically explaining you how to do screen design. And um, vector in this case is important because there is some sort of um, scalability to the screen because they have different sizes. Um, which probably you won't have a programmer you to help you with um, uh, images that can uh, size uh, in the right way on your screen, especially buttons and stuff like that. But um, it shows you here from the first step, how do you do this? How do you design a clean interface? So that's really important uh, that it's looking good that people are understanding how to use it as if it's nice. It has a nice flow to it when you use it. So um, Designing this in the right way is important, but also knowing how to design this um, and showing the customer um, how it looks is important. So you can see here step by step how to do each of these things. Um, yeah, so this is a really nice explanation. And another thing, of course, and this is the last project in here is, um, there we go, this is the icon can see here the app icon on the store and this is of course what makes your app sell uh, because if people don't like the icon if the icon doesn't look professional they won't even look at the page of the app or download it to test so this is an important part if you want to go in these kind of areas and here again it explains you here for example boldness consistency layered look all these kind of things are explained again in a short and very precise way and then they go step by step through the different steps that you have to take uh, to design this logo as you can see here you get a lot of different information from the very basics to the very professional end where you can do something for a customer and the cool thing also is here at the very end you have these cards they are tear out cards uh, of a stable um, paper so you can um, you can rip them out and uh, take them with you wherever you go and you have a little um, cheat sheet uh, so you know where the different shortcuts are and stuff like that. And it, as you can see here, they are for Mac, they are also for Windows, so really useful stuff. Okay, so that was my um, showing you a, a presentation of the Affinity Workbook. I think it's very well made. It's very artistically um, created. Uh, the examples are good for beginners. They have a lot of interesting thing also uh, for medium or professionals even. Uh, so I can really uh, suggest that this is a good book to learn Affinity Designer with or Vector Graphics uh, in a total. And if you, like I said, if you get started with Vector Graphics, I really, really, really suggest to you that you get some source of learning material. You don't have to get this book necessarily, uh, but something um, a course, a book uh, where you read how to do this and how to think in vector graphics because this is very different from pixels. Um, so you will need a resource to get uh, quick successes and really um, learn the right steps. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye! Hello my friends, it's me again. So this was the book. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Here's a little uh, personal opinion on the book. Should you buy it? Should you not buy it? And personally, I have to say I'm super surprised because is this is one of the rare books where I would say I f didn't find anything wrong with it. It's a really great book. It's very well done. I like every one of the examples in the book from the artistic projects to the commercial projects. Everything is a really good guide in there. Uh, so I have to admit, I can't say anything bad about the book. Even though I'm really good finding bad things, criticizing works, stuff like that, I really like it. There's nothing I can say that's wrong about that. The only thing you should look out for is it's more about the desktop versions. It's not for the iPad version of um, the program. So uh, if you want a book for that, this is not the right book. But if you want a book for the desktop version and for learning vectors and affinity designer, this is the right way to go. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye.